Hi, everyone. We are back with another episode of The Janelle Show, and I have with me Mr. Yaron Bean. He is an e-commerce entrepreneur, growth coach, and industrial engineer with a passion for helping businesses succeed. Born and raised in Israel, Yaron has served in the Israeli Special Force as a search and rescue operator before pursuing a career in entrepreneurship. In addition to his professional pursuits, Yaron is passionate about stoic philosophy, personal development, and body building with a track record for bootstrapping and scaling seven-figure e-commerce stores while traveling the world Yaron has a wealth of experience to share with listeners and readers hi Yaron hi Janelle I'm so excited thank you for having me Thank you for being here. I'm super excited to talk to you. I know when we first got started, you were telling me that you're traveling around now. And that's what this podcast is about, living the life of your dreams. So I'm so excited to hear how you got started and how we got to this point that you're traveling all over. So how did you get started in, I know you were in special forces. How did you become an entrepreneur after that? Awesome. Great question. Um, I, I'm always wondering wh- how back should I start the story? But <laughs> yeah, maybe probably the the serving in the army is a good point because uh, in Israel, when you get when you're 18 years old, you, it's mandatory to go to the army. Mm-hmm. I served in the special forces, so I served for four years. And normally, after you finish the army, uh, you go traveling. This is what the Israelis do. So mm-hmm. I went traveling. I actually ended up traveling for almost four years, and I only started my degree when I was 26 years old. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't still sure what I want to do, so I decided to pick industrial engineering, which seemed like a broad topic. And I, I, I did a degree and finished after four years. And then me and my wife, we decided we don't want to start with the grown up world just yet. We wanted to <laughs> go traveling again. So we went to Thailand and mm. loved Thailand so much. And we said, OK, we need to come back here as soon as possible. No way we're going to spend our life stuck in an office. And after three, three months actually working as a media buyer, I, I realized um, I need to find something to, you know, escape the rat race. And luckily, a, a good friend of mine, a childhood friend of mine, actually, a, we sat in the bar in Tel Aviv and he showed me a screenshot of his Shopify store. Uh, and he, he told me that he was making sales. And until that point, I was sure it was like just something that Gurus was trying to sell and it's completely fake and bullshit. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> since it was my childhood friend, I said, OK, I, we should give this a shot. So the morning after me and my wife, we, we built a week store. We had zero knowledge, but the same evening we went for dinner and we got our first sale, probably like complete beginner's luck. And then we realized we can make money online. So after a couple of years of months, actually, we, we optimized the store and we started spending more money on Facebook ads. And long story short, after two years, the profits were consistent enough. So we decided to quit both our jobs and we just went traveling at the beginning of 2019. So we, re- we ran an e-commerce store that actually sold more than $4 million uh, while we were traveling mainly in Southeast Asia, uh, South Africa, and now we're in Eastern Europe. Wow. Wait, you said a whole lot there. Hold on. <laughs> that was a lot. Okay. First, I love Thailand, my favorite country sure. of all times absolutely love it there i need to be living there right now Mm -hmm. it's just it's everything first thing second thing i love how you said that you had to see the results from your childhood friend right because we believe the online world is just it's bullshit right it's like Mm -hmm. it's not real these people are lying about how much money they make but because you knew the guy you were like okay i trust him i believe that this is real and then you turned around and made $4 million. What time frame was that? Was that in a year? How long was that? The four the, million? Uh, it, just to make things right, it's not all, all roses and $4 million is oh, revenue. Yes. It's not only yeah. profits. So it's I, not profit. I just want yeah. to clarify. Yes, yes. Uh, no, thank you for this that. Was, uh, this was over a time span of like about three or four years. Mm-hmm. Um, so $1 million uh, yearly, more or less. Um, and yeah, I think it's important to understand that, as you said, it's because I had the proof of, of my mm-hmm. childhood friends that helped me realize. And we also did a calculation. Uh, my wife, we did kind of a calculation. If we stay in our current jobs, how much can we earn and save on a mm-hmm. monthly basis? And we realized it was like 15,000 bucks yearly because mm-hmm. the cost of living in Israel is very high. Yeah. Um, and the salaries are, are relatively low. Compared to the cost of living. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. So we realized there's no way out if we don't do something on our own. And and luckily, we kind of had 
maybe confidence, maybe stupidity, maybe ignorance <laughs> that we will be able to succeed. And luckily it, it, it turned out well. <laughs> so it's definitely possible. I love that. And I love how you and your wife are working together as a team to do this. That's wonderful. Um, so, okay. So you started, okay. So how did we get though? Okay. First of all, my first question, mm -hmm. I have so many questions here. Okay. Sure. First question <laughs> is how much profits was that? Okay. So we, we know we're at a million dollars a year on average. How mm -hmm. many, how much is that in profits? Yeah. Normally in, in the e-com game, it, it, it normally, when you do, we started out drop shipping and later mm -hmm. on we built a kind of a brand. It's normally 20%, uh, mm -hmm. pre-tax more or okay. less this is this is more or less the the ball so about two hundred thousand dollars in mm -hmm. profits you were making yeah. okay that's good mm -hmm. that's really good that's more sat than the average person's salary right sure i can't complain and and we we literally didn't i mean we're laughing now that we now now we have a, a child uh, our first daughter was born and yeah. we're like hectically walking and we're laughing how much time we invested or maybe wasted when we had this dropshipping business because we literally did nothing we, we hired the VAs that handled most of the work and I wouldn't call it passive because I don't think anything is passive, mm -hmm. but from like a standpoint of really working on the laptop, we spent like 20, 40 minutes daily <laughs> when the machine was working, you know? Right. So looking back, it's, it's funny because I think it gave us kind of a crooked perception of, of how reality works because it mm -hmm. was a combination of luck, you know, mm -hmm. must admit. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you selling? So we started out selling, very, we started out very opportunistic. We just kind of analyzed what seemed to be working and we threw it in the in the Facebook ads manager and just tested a lot of products mm. until we find like winning products. This is like a term from the dropshipping world. And mm -hmm. A winning product is a product that is very profitable. So we find two or three of like those. And then we realized we need to double down on the product that was working. And we kind of built an e-store around that specific product. Uh, and this specific product was actually shapewear, like panties and knickers, uh, mainly in the UK market. Yes. Um, we kind of took shape. I don't know if you know the brand Shaper Mint, which is a very, very famous US brand. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. kind of took them as inspiration and did kind of what they were doing just in the UK. Gotcha. So smart. So looking at, we're mirroring a big brand and making mm -hmm. it, you know, running the ads, look, doing a look-alike campaign. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, on their ads. I love it. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. That's wonderful. So, okay. So, so okay. I wanted. I was going to ask you what strategies you use. So, we mm -hmm. we got some strategies here. Okay. So we did a we did the winning product, right? Mm -hmm. We looked around and we tested the market with different winning products, and then we ran Facebook ads. And a Facebook ad specifically was a look-alike campaign. Not necessarily just the lookalike. Uh, I mean, it's very, it's very hard to simplify the process of Facebook ads. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, I, 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 I was used to spending one million dollars monthly on Facebook ads when I, like, in my nine to five job. Mm. So I learned a lot of tactics and methods to, you know, to invest million dollars profitably in Facebook ads is kind of challenging. Right. So I, I don't like. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't think it's it's a it's a simple process but no it's general, not at all yeah no <laughs> <laughs> but in general just just zooming out i think that like my guideline is just testing a lot of things and testing mm -hmm. very fast this is like what i believe in like velocity over everything i don't mm -hmm. care so much about quality i just care about quantity mm -hmm. and seeing what sticks this is my I my philosophy it. so you're throwing that spaghetti at the wall and trying to exactly. figure out what <laughs> exactly <laughs> i love it so guys what he's saying is be willing to test things right don't mm -hmm. just stick with one thing and say look this is what i want to do this he said test a whole bunch of different things and figure out what works because your goal is to make money at the end of the day profits over everything else mm -hmm. so test until you figure out what is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck is basically what he's saying for sure I love it. So what is one outrageous, because you've accomplished a lot, but what is one outrageous goal that you've accomplished? Um, so I kind of expected that you will ask this question and I'm, I wasn't sure how to, you know, uh, answer it. Um, I think although in the business perspective, I kind of told you what I felt was uh, pretty meaningful, but uh, two years ago, uh, while the business was working very well, I decided to, to embark on a journey uh, in like bodybuilding, actually. Because I saw an Instagram post of, of a guy who, who won uh, the show in Israel, and he kind of elaborated regarding the process. And I realized 
that this process demanded a lot of self-discipline. Right. And and it, at, at, at first it kind of scared me, but then I, I said, okay, why, why shouldn't I do this? And I kept on thinking of, about this like for one year until I came to my wife and I told her, listen, um, I was always fit in my life, but I was always not ski, not uh, I didn't, I wasn't ripped as I wanted to right. be. Although I Muscular. was always fit, yes. I was always athletic. I served in the special forces, but I wasn't ripped. Mm. Um, so I said, okay, why not give this a shot and, and see how it goes? And then I hired a, I hired a coach and I started the process of, of, of getting ready to the bodybuilding competition. I didn't know much about the process, what the process entails. And I think most of the people that are not involved don't know what the process entails, but it, it was the most challenging thing I did in my life because it's like six months of weighing your food, every spoon that you eat, you weigh everything. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the last two years, uh, two months, your sleep is fractioned. You can't, I, I couldn't even uh, take the groceries from the store because you're so, you're so uh, underfed. You're mm-hmm. such a, in such a huge deficit of, of calories. So I think this was my biggest accomplishment because I kind of felt like I, I conquered the need to eat. Uh, not, <laughs> not exactly they need to eat, but, you know, regulate, you know, yes. uh, the, temp- the temptation of eating, of overeating. So this was one of my most um, impactful or, or fun and challenging uh, experiences lately. But I think that that also gives to your business as well, right? So mm-hmm. you are able to mentally control how you do different things, right? So how you do one thing is how you do everything. So you're able mm-hmm. to control your desire for food. So the, that is how you're doing your business as well. So I like that. I definitely, so sure. that's, that's great. Thank you for that. Yeah, I I, I, I I totally agree about this sentence. But uh, one thing to note is when I was focused on the bodybuilding, the business suffered like extremely yeah. suffered because it was so demanding. Mm. So uh, I, I believe that our discipline span uh, resource mm. is, is is perishing. So we need to decide where we, we we laser focus our energy. And in this case, I, I laser focused on the bodybuilding and my business kind of suffered. And uh, just an observation that I think is important to mention. I I wonder if it's possible to divvy out that discipline mm-hmm. a little bit because you were so bodybuilding is intense, right? I have a mm-hmm. best friend who was but does bodybuilding. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. if you're able to um give out that discipline in like, okay, here to the business, I'm gonna give you 10%. To bodybuilding, mm-hmm. I'm gonna give 10%. To my family, I'm gonna give 10%. Do you think that that's possible? Whereas if with what you were doing before is bodybuilding 75%, my family mm-hmm. 10%, my business 10%. Are, how do you feel about that? Yeah, this, is a, this is a great question. It's something that I, I often think about, um, like balancing and integration, because it's something that I heard from one of my mentors. Um, when I told him, I'm looking for a balanced life. So he he made the, the distinction between a balanced and an equalized life. Mm-hmm. So let's say you're working on f- four vectors. So family, business, health, and relationships. So balance doesn't necessarily mean you invest 25% in each one of them. You can be balanced if you do like 40 in relationship, 20 in uh, family, 20 in wealth, and 20 in in health. So this has kind of shifted my view regarding what is balance and what is integrating different aspects of life. Um, There is something to be said regarding spreading yourself too thin. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a constant balance between balancing, you know. The other day I did that wheel of life where you shade your uh-huh. weakest portion of your life. Right. And I was like, okay, I can focus. Say I put 50% of my focus into my weakest area in my life based on all the different mm-hmm. aspects there are. And then divvy up the rest of my percentages, small percentages to the other aspects of my life. I feel like that is balanced because I need mm-hmm. to work on strengthening this weak mm-hmm. area of my life. So it's going to get most of my attention. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. This is yeah. A, yeah I, I totally get it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what is your ultimate dream right now? What are you working on accomplishing next? Mm -hmm. Um, So at the moment, we've, as I told you, we've been traveling for four years now. We kind of, we we spent the first year in in Thailand, then we moved to Cape Town. Then we spent some time during the COVID in Israel. And in the last year we spent actually in Phuket in in Thailand. This Mm -hmm. is where our daughter was born. 
And now we moved here with the goal of, of settling down because we kind of had enough of traveling. We want to build our own nest, you know, and uh, have uh, good friends, like building long-term relationships. So, I, I mean, my first goal is being healthy and that my family would be healthy. You know, I think it's the most important thing. And, and the second one is just building a nest and building a base and settling down because I, I feel that I'm not in the mood for traveling at the moment, just, just chilling, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. And so we all go through those cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Those are, and then soon, maybe after the baby's a little older, you're like, you know what? I want her to see this place. I want to mm -hmm. start traveling again. So it's, you know, go, going with what is um, works for your life at that point in time. Exactly. Exactly. It's very, it's, it's very, a very important realization that I had lately that everything is context dependent. Mm -hmm. There is no black and white. It's all a dichotomies, uh, uh, sorry, the continuums, and it's everything is cont context dependent. So at the moment, I don't feel like traveling, but probably, as you said, it's a cycle in two months time or two years time, I'll, I'll be interested in traveling and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you do um, how you feel. So definitely. Exactly. Um, I would love to get from you a suggestion on a book. I'm a big book reader. I love to give mm -hmm. my um, guests new books to read. So what is a, a book that changed your life or something you're reading now? I would love mm -hmm. to get a suggestion from you. Awesome. So um, based on my prior answer that everything is context dependent, I also like when I suggest books, I, I also try to, you know, personalize it, personalize it depending on, on what is the, the recipient is mm -hmm. looking for so is there anything specific that you're interested in? because I, I'm also a bookworm so there's mm -hmm. a lot of books that I've been reading so I'm just yeah. curious what is the field like, that you're interested um, in I think for this audience and for myself it's more mm -hmm. self-help purpose-driven books mm -hmm. kind of you know what should I do next in my life mm -hmm. kind of books yeah so I for me well, well I have a few books that I often go back to because after reading a lot of books I realized that I prefer um completely understanding a few just a few books that were like the origin in my opinion mm -hmm, instead of mm -hmm. reading like the derivatives of the book so yep, yep in yep. marketing instead of reading like all the new stuff i just read dan kennedy stuff mm -hmm. in, uh, so this is just an example if i want to read like tinkerer so i go to the to the origin i, I go to socrates i go to the stoic philosophers i'm not interested in, in reading new stuff because i kind of feel that everything is is just derivatives of the original mm -hmm. yes um so one of the pieces of content that I go back to very, very often is, is it's actually also a podcast and also a book. Uh, it's by Naval Ravikant. Uh, I don't know, have you heard about Naval Ravikant? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. He's, he, he's a very famous investor and also thinker, uh, thinker or thinker. And he has a, a, a four hours long podcast that is called How to Get Rich. Mm -hmm. um, the name is cheesy, but the content is, is mind blowing. And I love listening to it every time I listen to it. it, it strikes me and opens my mind from a different perspective. And there's also a, a, a book that is called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant, which discusses the same, the same principles and the same ideas. Uh, but in my opinion, it's just a, a gold mine. I'm excited. I love gold. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful. I'm definitely going to listen to that immediately. Thank you so awesome. much for sharing. Sure, my um, pleasure. I appreciate you for being here. I would love for my audience to be able to support you, contact you, mm -hmm. all of that type of stuff. So how can we reach out to you? Yeah. Um, it, it was my pleasure, first of all. Uh, I, I enjoyed the, our conversation and you had great questions. Regarding where can people contact me, I, I'm mostly active on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. I think it would be best if I just uh, send you the link later and you share it in the show notes. Uh, people can look up Yaron Bean. It's B with B -E, e N LinkedIn and they will probably find me. I also have the podcast, which is called the Ecomex Factor Podcast. Also, if you Google it, you should find it. Um, and that's it, basically. Perfect. I will put all of those links down in the show notes below so you guys can contact Aaron. If you're looking to build an online business, I'm sure he can help you with that. I'm sure he's coaching and doing something amazing with that. So guys, you have been listening to The Janelle Show. Thank you so much for being here. We're here every Sunday. Aaron, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.